In this video, I'll discuss relational databases. Databases are ubiquitous and found in some form or another in virtually every organization and company. There are numerous types of database architecture, but by far the most prevalent is the relational database model, and by far the most popular way to interact with relational databases is via SQL, the Structured Query Language. I'll sometimes call the language SQL rather than SQL, but they both mean the same thing. This plot shows interest, measured by number of Google searches, in SQL compared to interest in Python. SQL is in blue and Python is in red. SQL is roughly comparable, having about half as many searches in the past year. Given the popularity of Python, this indicates how significant SQL is as a language, especially considering its limited use cases compared to Python. It's really only for interacting with databases. The plot here shows that SQL has been experiencing a slight decline over the past 10 years, but it has stayed consistently important. Interestingly, there are yearly dips in interest in SQL. I'll let you figure out what causes these by yourself by going on Google Trends and having a look at the data. You've probably already seen a relational database, but in case you haven't, and just to refresh your memory even if you have, a relational database is more or less a collection of tables. A table consists of rows and columns, and a particular entry in the table is called a field. This table is the customer table from a standard example database called Northwind. This is a database which you'll probably come across as it's often used in SQL programming examples. Each table has a name, in this case it's customers. The columns have labels or headings, for example contact name or address. Note the column labeled customer ID. Every SQL table has a column like this, which gives each row a unique identifier. Sometimes the IDs are meaningful, but often they're arbitrary. These IDs are called keys, and in the case where an ID identifies a row precisely, it is called a primary key. The main things to do with a SQL database are to safely store and organize data and to query that data. These videos will mainly be about queries. We can query a single table, or by joining two or more tables, we can create richer data structures, allowing for more complex queries. For example, we may have one table for customer purchases and one table for customer addresses. Joining them would allow us to make queries of the new table, like how many sales did we make in the EX1 postcode. By relating tables via shared keys, SQL allows you to perform complex queries like give me all the customers who spent over £2,000 in the last three months from Devon whose names begin with H. SQL is a hugely popular language, so there are many tutorials online which you can use to supplement these lectures. Some good ones are listed here, though there are infinitely more to choose from. Most people who work with relational databases do so using software packages like Microsoft Access, MySQL, or Oracle SQL. There are slight differences in syntax between different implementations of SQL, which you should be aware of if you're reading online tutorials or you're moving from one system to another. In this course, we'll use Python, as always, and the SQLite module. The reasons for this are 1. It's free, and 2. We can feed any data returned by our queries into other Python code. For example, our query results can go directly into matplotlib or numpy without creating temporary files. This can be really useful for creating interactive visualizations and dashboards. This is one of the main applications of software like Tableau and Power BI, so getting a feel for how to do it in Python might help if you encounter those other packages down the line. It can also be nice, especially when working on small-scale projects, as you will be in this course, to have both data management and data analysis software written in the same language. The disadvantage is that using Python makes the syntax a little bit ugly. For example, when using MySQL Workbench or something like that, which is an interface for working with relational databases in SQL, we can just type queries into the console. When using Python, we have to enclose queries in quotes and give them as an argument to what's called the cursor function, which we'll talk about in a minute. However, the advantages outweigh this slight disadvantage, and we'll be using the SQLite 3 module to perform SQL queries in this lecture. SQLite is by no means an obscure implementation. It's very likely that your phone uses SQLite for database transactions, especially if you have an Android.